second battle. How's it going? Good. That's good. You guys are really Yes. Yeah. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Nancy Anstruther. <laughs> you guys are always laughing. Why did you laugh at that? Well, I'm starting plastic surgery. <laughs> And I'm going to change myself to Barbara Cleek. Um, I'm sorry, Nancy had a, had a bitch, and I think she's okay, but she had a bitch that had was pretty cool. And um, so she's seeking out a veterinarian, and, and we hope that she will come back. Um, um, but I think everything, you know, she has a normal temperature, which is good. Um, so she and I collaborated to do this, but she wrote, she wrote the script. <laughs> and so, not only am I uh, Nancy this morning, but my husband's name is not Will, it's Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, bear with us, because I'll try to, um, I'm going to have to add live a lot of it, and I'm really sorry, and, I'm okay. and you can see Nancy's sense of humor when, when I'm reading this. Um, what I'm going to do first of all is we're going to start and have you just take a look at just the introduction. This is just a slideshow. The herding pictures, a lot of them, other than with the black dog, were taken with their um, just getting their um, HCs, and so they're very enthusiastic. And I know a little bit too much. We were just yeah. trying to show the balance and how they work, and they really don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. We have some herding experts in here in the last room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people who take their first impression of a dog from the face, I look at the dog from the side, as the outline and balance of the dog is the first thing that catches my eye. I like to view dogs from across the ring and really spend a couple of minutes taking in the balance.
these we, we will go ahead and let you know who they are. If I'm pleased with the way the parts fit together, then I like to see the dog move again from the side. This shows me the kinetic conformation of the dog. Simply put, if the dog can hold his outline on the go, then I know the dog is generally a correctly balanced one, and now he holds my interest. Then, and only then, do I go and look at the face and put my hands on the hip. Many collie breeders go to the head and expression first, and many look at them moving first. All is correct. My way is just more correct. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm, uh, I'm pretty much a balanced person too, although I do tend to maybe go to the head more quickly than, than perhaps Nancy does. Um, but I thought what she said here is really good. My husband, and that's um, my husband Bob, not my husband Will, and I, and I have been arguing about balance since I agreed to do the seminar. He believes that balance can be learned. Well, I believe that either, bal either people have a feel for balance or they don't. He argues that he has learned balance in the collies over the years from listening to me blather on. Well, I say he has instead just learned to shut up and agree with me. <laughs> the more I've worked on this seminar, the more I realize that he may be correct. <laughs> At least we better hope so or you're wasting your time here. Uh, and then she goes on. This picture is, does anybody want to cow wrap? Silver satin. Right. Yep. John Buddy. Champion Kimrick Silver Satin. And she is my poster child for balance. I remember going through the second library of champions book and stopping dead at this photo. This was what I was looking for in a college. And this is the outline that I've always strived for. She finished in 1969, over 40 years ago, and could still compete today. Anybody want to holler out a name? Peaches. Everybody knows this bitch by her, her call <laughs> name. It's really funny. The last game. thing, that's we got about three people yell out Peaches. Arabesque. Right. Champion Tartan Side Arabesque. Uh, Nancy asked me to send the picture that hit me for balance, and um, I remember seeing this in one of the expressions a few years ago, and I just went, mm, you know, like that. And um, um, John Buddy, towards the end here, does talk about when he was in the judges seminar trying to get the pictures for, you have that in your folder for the appearance? Mm -hmm. He said the problem was trying to find the correct, finding a dog with good balance was not as hard as finding a picture of that dog showing the good balance. And so a lot of this is beautiful photography. And, and what we've tried to do is get pictures that to us um, are, we're not showing bad balance as much as we want to show different ways that we look at a picture and say, wow, isn't that pretty? We may not all agree on that, but we're, the hit it from the negative side is um, not the way you want to approach it. You want to hit it from the positive side. It's interesting um, with Silver Satin and this dog, these are two completely different lines. And here again, you know, a correct dog in any line is, is, is beautiful. So. Um, that's kind of the way we get this. And we talk about balance, what is it? The word is thrown around everywhere. The first paragraph of our standard mentions it. If the forefathers of our breed, exceedingly smart people, to write such a beautiful standard, have mentioned this in the first paragraph, then it must be pretty important. The Kali presents an impressive, proud picture of true balance each part being in harmonious proportion to every other part into the whole. It also goes on to say lack of overall balance impaired the general character. To me, this pretty much sums up what balance is. Orem Cam, do we remember Orem Cam? 
He wrote, greatly skilled breeders took a rough, shirt-sleeved working breed and bred the dog up towards a mental vision built on beauty without regard to how hard or easy the task. And we picture some of the old Bobby and the old, the old dogs. The result is a delicately balanced fabric of compromise, eternally balanced on quite a fine fulcrum. Unless the com compromises are constantly renewed and rebalanced, we quickly drift to the cloddy, common farm type dog on one hand, or into a variety of overdone misfits on the other. Certain people. 
Do you folks have, tell, tell us why you like the one on the left. <coughs> it's more clean. It's more clean. Sorry, oh, yeah. I'm tired. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they're lost to it. And you know, that's what Jerry all about. That's what the other gal was. She said, I love the way it just flows down. Now, probably you like Pekingese. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't isn't that an interesting to kind of show the um, now what about the lamps? Which one uh, which one likes the middle one? I like the little one. I like the I said middle. 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 Yeah. Middle. That's what I meant. Middle. That's okay. Middle. You like them. Okay. I know it's, it seems like it's too much shade, and yet I like I like it to cover that little, what do you call the part that's right below <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, well that's interesting, because here again, I mean, I'm sure, um, but we had some differences of opinion. I don't think, um, what about the one on the far right? No. I don't think anybody really cares for that. It's kind of a little wimpy thing. And I think, you know, extreme on the bottom far right is pretty extreme. Barbara, can you go back to the, the other one? I was trying to figure out why I like the, the top picture better. Or on the, the right. Okay. The reason I like the one on the right is it keeps your eye in the picture because it's got two larger shapes balancing the out, out, outside. So you look at it and you're drawn down into the picture and, and you stop at the other side and you go back to the picture. Whereas the one on the left, you can you naturally kind of, or I find that I start at the left hand side and then I just go to the right and I just keep going and, and fall off. <laughs> right, so it's something, to find that to balance would be something that keeps your eye on the dog mm -hmm. rather than distracting mm -hmm. the work over. That's very good. That's very good. Well and you can picture picture a collie standing still and you've got the head and the neck and the ears and then you've got the tail and the, and the rear and they do balance. I mean everything is balanced and, and I see what you're saying. That would keep your eye on there. You'd look at that longer than the first one. Mm -hmm. Good observation. Here she's just <coughs> showing different things on balance. That just shows why you would keep looking at it. one side to the other because they're even looking at it. Mm -hmm. and too much weight on one end drops <coughs> changing the balance. Dogs come in three different body styles. The square breeds, uh, dogs who are about the same from the ground to the withers as from the forechest to the buds. Um, and in the Belgium, you can see that. Breeds such as the Doberman, Terry Blue, Boxer. And say here that um, that her friends that have Dobermans um, often find that the MC will pick a Doberman which, which is a little bit longer in body and they give her a bad time because that's what her eye has been trained to look for. Is that, is that extra <coughs>
to height and so first we need to train our eyes to see a dog that's slightly longer than tall. Many breeds use this description in their standards and are often referred to as off square or slightly rectangular. Other breeds that share the co collie's body proportions are Samoyed, Siberian Husky, Chihuahua, Papillon, uh, Bichon, and German Shepherd. And then lastly, we have the elongated breeds, which are much longer than tall. And the standards often say twice as long as they are tall. All three types are balanced in their own way. We as collie people need to keep our eyes trained to ensure our dogs are not becoming square and to keep referring to the standard in the trifle long in proportion to height part. <coughs> it is too easy to square up our dogs to the detriment of the true collie balance. All collie photos that we are using in this talk are of, to us, correctly proportioned, well-balanced dogs. <coughs> this, is, uh, this is out of order, so I will go on. Um, we were talking a little bit about this in the last um, group. I am not really into measuring and all bones and, and muscular stuff. I tend to look at the overall view of, view of things more. And um, we had to include these because a lot of people, and Maureen still, bless her heart, um, sent part of her original drawings for us. And these are really, really helpful. They're very helpful to me. Um, to learn you know, where the proportions are and the angles and everything. But here again, I think we all look at dogs differently and, and some people love this and love the measuring, and love to have it, the angles and know exactly what all the bones and everything is. So on a balance in appearance. What is the collie meant to do? <laughs> Collies are bred to purr to move quickly, effortlessly, able to trot many miles a day, change directions quickly, move at lightning speed, or slow to a walk, hurting an injured lamb. Although we're not going to go into movement here, the main purpose of correct balance is to propel the collie to do what he does best, covering ground effortlessly and easily. This means a ground covering smooth gait, the front leg reaching <coughs> as far out as possible. The promise of reach can be seen in the standing dog when the front assembly with the correct angle and long upper arm brings the front leg well under the body when standing, balance. The same for the well-angulated rear, pro propelling the dog forward with a muscular, well-bent stifle, never interfering with the front. The complementary bone length and rear angles in harmony with the front reach balance. The back length also must the back length also must accommodate the stride level sufficiently long to allow the front and rear drive without the rear overpowering the front. The level back with the correct tail set brings the tail straight back out and back of the dog, acting as a rudder. The long muscular neck quickly steering the speedy dog around obstacles. When the collie stops, front legs well under the body, level back, sloping, sloping crew, powerful rear planted firmly, the tail naturally relaxes and falls, reaching the hock. The head rises on the long neck which stands upright on the well-sloped shoulder, balance. The deep chest, the breastbone well out in front, gives great heart and lung capacity, balance. The ears are tulip and pointed forward, listening, balance. The standard tells us the collie presents an impressive crowd picture 
of true balance, each part being in harmonious proportion to every other part into the whole. Stated simply that no part of the colony ever seems to be out of proportion in any other way of balance. You ready? This is a series of um, photographs, obviously, of the same dog. <laughs> this will teach you never to trust a picture you see and how they express themselves. <laughs> I just am amazed at what they can do. <laughs> it also shows you to, to, to train, to know whether a dog is, is perhaps um, not tall on leg, but maybe too short, or vice versa. Um, All the same dog, isn't that something? Yeah. And please, if you have any comments, speak up. We'd like to hear. Would you mind going back to the other photo right now? You guys see the balance here? See how the, the sheep and the dog, they're, they're pretty much as plain way that I can exactly there. And here again, I know Sharon is there, and she's going to say Barbara, and he's moving them a little fast, but <laughs> it does show pretty balance. Mm -hmm. It shows great focus. And great focus, yeah. You see the sheep looking back at the dog. Mm -hmm. Those are the dogs there. at the beginning here the, the fact that she likes to see a dog keep its shape as it moves so she included these <coughs> pictures mm -hmm. where you can you know readily tell what breed it is and it keeps its outline mm -hmm. um, here's a Speak up if you want to say anything about these pictures. Um, this little, this picture, to me, appeals to me, maybe because the dog is a little bit longer. But I, um, <coughs> it's a very balanced picture, and it's kind of like your, the shelf. Because you can see the, the tail and the head and everything. It's, it's a, a picture of balance, I think, quite, quite lovely. So what we did is we 
he asked several breeders um, to send us pictures of dogs that they feel show what they like in balance. And these are from all different lines. And it was really fun to get their responses back. And um, I wanted to move towards this because in the last group, we really didn't have time to go through all this. So I want to be sure because uh, I think that there's a lot of wonderful information here. Um, so they wrote back, we asked them to keep it within one paragraph, and it's amazing what the person can get in one paragraph. <laughs> but um, Joe Reno was very good. He did one, one paragraph. Um, but of course, uh, some of these are our judges, and they just really like to teach. Um, And Nancy said that she was getting most of the pictures. I forwarded some of them to her. And she said, um, one of the, um, and may I say that we all have preconceived notions that are almost always wrong. Not one of the people that we asked sent what I thought they would. Mm -hmm. I thought that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And we'll start here with Barbara Schwartz, who sent us photos of her beautiful bitch champion and prop to refer to me as the 12th. 12 week old puppy. Um, she um, won the national in 68 or, does anybody know the exact date? But she didn't win it, excuse me, she won winners bitch. And I remember um, looking at colleagues, we all remember colleagues, and seeing a picture of this bitch and I fell in love with her. And I wrote Barbara and I purchased our, the first dog that we finished his name was Champion Impromptu First Edition, and he finished in 1971. And it was a repeat breeding of this. She, um, she had a Champion Impromptu Repartee, um, not Repartee, Bert Norton came from that. Pocus Pocus, I don't know, do these names mean anything? Yeah. It was a, um, she was a daughter of Champion <coughs> Lemnall's Flash Lightning, the wife. And there were several. Um, this was just kind of a, just a really pretty, pretty breeding. So um, I didn't stay in this line at all, but um, I think a lot of it was because of distance. I think it's important when you start that you have a mentor fairly close to you. And she was in New Hampshire, and I was in, at that point, Montana. But she writes, um, now, if, and if you want to make any comments and stop me, please do. I, I'm going to read you what she is writing about this. Um, she's writing about impromptu repartee. The first is her as a 12-week-old puppy. The second is her when she won the working group at three, right before she took best opposite sex at the National. Please note that the proportions are the same. The length of bone is balanced. The front and rear angulation is balanced. She is standing over her legs, which is required by the standard. Her hock joint is parallel with the point of pelvis, and there is a straight line from the point of pelvis through the hock, down the rear pastern, and into the heel of her hind foot. The hock is let down, meaning well bent, and the length of the stifle bone from the point of the stifle is equal to the length of the rear pastern with the inclusion of the foot. And boy, I'll tell you, I have to read this about 100 times to even get. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> this can be measured when the collie is less than a week old. Has anybody done that? Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I, I heard a, a fellow from Norway came from many years ago, and he said when he whelps puppies, he holds them up like Sideline, and you can see the angles of the shoulders and mm -hmm. the cocks and everything, that right there. So that was interesting. I started to try that. Yeah, yeah, there were quite a few of them in the first group. Well, Pam um, Hastings goes into that a lot. I bet she does, yeah. I haven't been to her seminar. This can be measured when the collie is less than a week old. The proportion of the bones does not change. It can be checked by raising the hind leg so that the hock is just below the point of pelvis Extend the foot to the point of stifle. The toes should be even with the point of stifle. I wish we had a puppy here you know, to, <laughs> to try that. Okay, 
This can be measured when the Kali is less than a week old, the proportion of the. It can be checked by raising the hind leg so that the hop is just below the point of pelvis. Extend the foot to the point of stifle. The toe should be even with the point of stifle. In front, the elbow of the front leg should be directly under the withers. The length of the shoulder blade should be equal to the upper arm. The angle of the point of the shoulder should balance that of the angle at the point of the hop. You said that the um, elbow should be directly under the what? Um, uh, the elbow of the front leg should be directly under the withers. Who has that marker? Back the phone. Oh. <laughs> The Kali should have a forechest. We do not want an exaggerated prosternum. Instead, we want the sternum. We want the sternum to be in a straight line with the correctly angulated point of shoulder. The group should have the same degree of angle as the shoulder. The balance of length of bones, angles, and proportion and position can all be seen in young puppies. Muscling should also be balanced. If it is not, too much muscling on the inside of the rear legs can cause a cow hawk animal. Too much on the outside of the leg can cause spread hops. Conditioning is important in the front assembly, in the back, and in the neck carriage. Or can you reuse this pointer and go over that first paragraph again? Because um, you're right, I mean, it, it's hard to, unless you're reading it over and over again. Just read out point. Okay, good. Oh, good. Good, okay, now where, you want, where did you want me to start here? The very first paragraph that she starts describing. About a week old puppy? The, or the, the, the elbow? Angles. The elbow of the front leg should be directly under the withers. Yeah, before that. Oh, oh, before that. Well, that's where she's talking about the, the little puppy. You yeah. want to do that? Okay, where is she? Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. The length of the bone is balanced. The front and rear angulation is balanced. She is standing over her legs, which is required by the standard. And she's talking about this bit picture here. Well, both of them too. Her hop joint is parallel with the point of pelvis. That really helps. It really does. And there is a straight line from the point of pelvis through the hop down the rear pastern and into the heel of her hind foot. So the point of pelvis is at the back. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can see that in this picture too. The hop is let down, meaning well bent. These puppies were all from a white sire, so they do have the white coming up over the hop mm -hmm. and it um, can kind of throw you off in that. Um, the hawk is let down in the length of the stifle. Stifle is equal to the length of the rear pastern with the inclusion of the foot. Yeah. Okay, and then they say how you measure it. Okay, in front, the elbow of the front leg should be directly under the withers. The length of the shoulder blade should be equal to the upper arm. And we all hear about, you know, shorter upper arm, and what that does is you can, it, it restricts, so you're not reaching out, you don't have that reach. Somebody in the last uh, uh, group pointed out that they thought that the, a lot of the um, movement of the dogs and the structure was better years ago than it has that we've kind of gone a little bit downhill and then we started talking about the number of collies now that are doing well in the group ring. I mean it's just amazing. It was almost unheard of in the 60s and 70s for a collie to place in the group and now they're getting best in shows and so I think it depends on I think we're, we're making great strides in some ways and, and and then, of course, we always have problems. I think a lot of all, all breed judges do not understand collie gait at all. Right. 
vendor and overlook them, and they will put up a collie that moves more carrier, giving more with this with this straight yeah, yeah. straight back and everything, and not proper gait. That's interesting. I, I think out in, on the west, or out in Oregon, where I'm from, where we are seeing we're seeing some smooth collies doing it. You know, they're they're nicely moving dogs. They've, they've got that um, reach and drive. Um, I remember years ago I, I did a um, sweepstakes for Sheldies, and I'm not a, I'm not really a Sheldie person, but I did a sweepstakes, and the, the thing that just struck me is that they're Rear ends, they they move like they had a load in their pants, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you know just absolutely straight. They stood beautifully. You know you couldn't you couldn't have them stand wrong. But I, I just wanted to close my eyes when they moved. So um, uh, movement, you know, this balance has so much to do. I love the way Nancy keeps saying that she wants mm -hmm. to see the collie balanced when it moves. Right. And we were talking in the other one a little bit about the sculpturing, and we had a lady from Sweden and asking about the sculpturing and what what is done now, and mm -hmm. and sometimes they they are so beautiful standing still and they look correct, mm -hmm. but then when they start moving, you can see you know that it's it's basically they've been sculptured. Um, okay, so the collar should have a four chest. We do not want an, an exaggerated uh, post sternum. Instead, we want the sternum to be in a straight line with the correct, correctly angulated sh point of shoulder. The croup should have the same degree of angle as the shoulder. The balance of length of bones, angles, and position can be seen in young puppies. I think one of our handouts will show you the angles to on the front of the room. Yeah. Show you the line. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <clears throat> now this one, uh, Nancy did not put the name of the dogs in because we're going to have a guessing game here. Um, this is what John Buddy sent. Now, does anybody offhand and they tell me who these dogs do you think these dogs might be? I'm gonna go ahead and hand with you. <laughs> Dreamers noble. Yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> and who's that handling? That's yeah. Pat Shryock at that time now. And nobody knew who the judge was. Does anybody know who the judge is? She looks very familiar to me, but I don't know who she is. Okay, what about the dog on the left? And remember John Buddy sent these, and this is really interesting. Who's mm -hmm. this? John Hines? Oh, no. Sure. No. Got to think of a, a completely different line than the, basically, what do we have? Parader and? Okay. That's uh, no fooling. Champion brand white, no fooling. Uh -huh. So John says, um, trying, now this is where he talks about pictures, and I think this bears <coughs> repeating. Trying to find a dog with great balance is a lot easier than trying to find a photo of a dog with great balance. Having worked on the judges ed committee, nothing hit home to me as much as learn from the photo, not necessarily from the dog. When the last judges education committee was putting together the material for the handout and eventual DVDs, we spent hours upon hours trying to decide on which dog fits the description best. While all kinds of names were thrown out of dogs who exemplified particular virtues, we found it difficult in many cases to find a suitable photo to back up our choice. We had to learn that we need to select the photo which best fit the ideal description. And I know a lot of you have probably seen the old Bellhaven photos. And it is so completely different than the photos that we have nowadays. Um, but they at least had a professional photographer come in to take their dogs where 
oh golly, some of the photos of some of those old dogs that you know yeah. must have been beautiful. You think, oh my gosh, you know. I, I, I think one of the dogs I'd love to see a, a photo now with Nancy McDonald taking it or something would be um, Hazel Jane's Bright Future. I never personally saw him, but had, did anybody here see him? Once a long time ago, they lived in Illinois. Was he, what, what, is, what was your impression of him? He won the national, what, four times? Yeah, I think three or four. Four. Tell us about him. Well, he, he, he wasn't what, I, what you see today. I mean, okay. he uh, had a, you know, a nice coat. As far as I know, he had a nice disposition. I never, I mean, his inside was probably as nice as his out. Mm -hmm. And um, I was young, which is a long time ago. <laughs> and um, I think he won in the 50s, wasn't it? It's a long time. <laughs> 1950. But he, it was just uh, a dog that you looked at, him and, and maybe it was because of Lassie and all the rest of the stuff. As a young person, everybody fell in love with him. Oh. His pictures of his uh, head, and um, he looked like he had a lot of elegance, a lot of uh, length, and he had a little bit uh, beyond his time, I thought. But, but the photographs just don't, you know, don't capture what I would really like to see. This, I think this is really interesting that, that John used these older photographs. Um, with that in mind, I selected two, two photos of dogs who are long gone, but dogs who have great impact on my ideal of harmonious balance. These dogs were big winners when I first got involved in dogs, and they were extremely popular among the breeders of that day. It is so interesting to me now to look at these photos. They look rather simple. They look basic. Alas, they look very correct. Both of these dogs exuded a certain air when they were shown. Their body balance and flashing markings caught your attention immediately. They were curvy. And, and <clears throat> there was balance head to body. If your eye began examining them at the tip of the nose, it would work its way back through the soft curves in the body until you reach the tail. A new breeder today might think these dogs seemed a little high on leg or a little long in body, but if you really study these pictures, you will see that is not so. Nothing was overdone, nothing was exaggerated. In today's world, we often think if a little is good, more is better. That is not something I happen to agree with. We often see dogs in extremes today. Too much angulation gives a shelly like appearance. Shorter in leg, usually resulting from breeding for early maturity and for compact dogs that are low to the ground. Many a modern collie becomes a caricature of what is really desirable. These dogs had fronts that were well set on and true length of neck carried properly. A line drop from the ears would always fall in front of their forelegs. The true test of their balance, however, was made clear when they were asked to move down the mat, effortlessly elegant, proud, and using their tails as rudders as they covered great stretches of ground with little effort. There was no question that these dogs could work all day long and no question that they could turn on a dime when necessary. Neither of these dogs were profusely coated, and perhaps that is why one would miss nothing when observing their quality. More importantly, the coats fit without having to be stripped and cropped, sculptured and trimmed. Like the old soda slogan, this is the real thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These dogs were brand new champion brand wine, no cooling, and champion Glen Hill, dreamers, no I have a question. Sure. You were talking about movement. And we have, <clears throat> obviously, all kinds of judges out there because we've seen dogs that don't have the proper movement, you know, being put up. But my question is, our collies are single tracking dogs. Mm -hmm. And yet when you go in the ring, you always have judges that will say, slow your dog down, slow your dog down. You can't see single tracking if you get your dog too slow. Mm -hmm. So where do we hit a happy medium? <laughs> 
Oh. Does somebody want to help here? We have an explanation of signal tracking. If you're moving out, let's see. Okay. This is double tracking. Terriers do it. Picture a dog moving away from you. When they single track, they're bringing their legs in to the balance. Here again, that's the center of balance is when they bring the legs in. And that's what, that lets them turn instantly. Mm -hmm. If picture a dog going after a sheep going like this, what's he going to do if the sheep goes that way? He's going to fall. He's going to fall. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So, so they have to draw in it, into the center of balance, both the front, the front um, does too. If you, if you look at a dog going at a good pace, you know, yeah. the front, they'll, they'll come back in. Everything a good is example of it. They can just turn, go the like snow. this. In the sand. It makes or in the sand. Mm -hmm. All you're going to see is two feet. Right. You're not going to see four. Okay, so it's going to I be mean, in a single line. It's right. pretty much, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's close, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it's so they can hurt it, so they can turn. And, um, you know, the, and the tail they talk about using as a rudder, and they do. You can see the dog with the tail out, you know. And, and the, the head, they have to have that neck, you know, a little short think they couldn't turn. So everything is in balance to make them just turn. So if I were in, in the, if the judge tells you to slow down and a mentor of mine said to me, you always have to present the dog at their very best. So therefore, while you may slow down a little bit, you still need to present the dog like they're, they are, if they need to go faster, they need to go faster, and then. And I haven't. Um, I'm from I'm from Oregon, so I I haven't been to the all breed shows out in this area. But I just come back to the national. And we, have, and especially in the herding group, we have a Belgian, uh, which is a completely different movement. But we have a shepherd that does well. Um, I really haven't noticed the judge is slowing these dogs down. I mean, they just go, zoom, well, well, yeah, shine, yeah, yeah. Right. so, um, right. Can I, make a comment? I guess it depends on which part of the country, and you know, your top winning dogs in the group just seem to be there, and it's just every show them. we go, and, and I haven't noticed any great, can I have a green? Go ahead. Well, when you have a judge tell you to slow the dog down, you're, they're going to ask that mainly on psychic. So if you want to see a single track, and that's where you're going to see it coming and going. And if you've got a good handler that knows the right speed for that particular dog, you're going to see that single tracking coming and going. But when it comes to slowing the dog down, that's side gate only, not mm -hmm. coming and going. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 But a lot of times yeah. they tell you to go slow yeah. going around, but you're right. not going to see the single track. And right. You're going to see the reach and the drive. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and, um, and a lot of... It was very popular a few years ago, especially to get dogs that just go to the end of the lead and they just zoom. But it doesn't mean it's correct. You see that in Shelby's actually quite a bit. They go too fast. The past Most of these, they turn out a little too fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the crowd, the other exhibitors too, is all. Yeah, yeah. You can hold your dog back a little bit so then you can go on your right speed. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, of course, you're going to get all this in the end of the Okay, the next picture um, was sent by Les Canavan. Mm -hmm. um, that was really sweet of her to do that. <laughs> and next we have uh, champion uh, Rosebank Lock Larry and keep it a secret from Les Canavan. Um, attached picture of champion Rosebank, uh, et cetera, et cetera, who is my selection for proper balance in a collie. I feel the balance in a bitch is of prime importance as she is primarily intended for reproduction and must therefore not only herd, but must <coughs> also have the attributes to conceive and carry a litter to fruition. Any quality out of balance with the whole picture not only offends the eye, but can affect her ability to complete her mission. This bitch is the epitome of um, epitome, this bitch is the epitome of balance and possess all the necessary curves which allow proper movement and show the sweetness and grace the quality of her head and eye completes the picture. The 
next one um, is a smooth blue bitch from <coughs> Carol Stanley of After Hours College. This is champion Lady Vale After Hours Electra, and she won uh, winner's bitch at the CCFA in, in 06. I especially like this photo of her as she has the balance and structure that is required for the first paragraph of the standard. That's interesting. She sent, you know, a head-on, more head-on picture where we were trying to use more of the side, but I really like this, and I like her description here. She is proud and impressive. You just really see that. <coughs> and seems to own the ground that she's standing on. Her neck and elegance are apparent in the photo and she, possess, she possesses self-sovereignty. Her forechest is obvious and indicates that she can reach out with her forelegs with little effort. The muscles of the rear stifle area are articulated and well-defined. Her conditioning at that moment of the, of the photo was taken was what a true collie should be. There is nothing weak about her. Strength and endurance are waiting to be used. She looks like an athlete about to take off at a run. Her intelligence shows in her face and eyes with her ears at attention. Her round muzzle and well-placed stop are the finishing touches to completing a beautiful expression. Nothing seems out of balance to any other part of the whole. Um, and somewhere in here, Nancy does have a new trip, um, and I don't know why I've used it both times. She's talking about when you're looking at the balance of a colleague, she said things like a heavy head or depth throws off that balance too. And so, you know, and, and she touches in there about the, and the ear is right on top of it. Or, up where they're supposed to be. I don't want to see on top of the head because that isn't completely correct either. But um, all this, I mean, it's the whole dog. And that's what that's what we're trying to look at is the whole dog. Now the next photo is from Mike Cheatham. <coughs> and where I'm standing, this really distorts this photo, and I didn't see this because this was a late edition. Um, from the back, it, can you make a comment on this photo? I, I know our head is turned, which kind yeah, of threw, threw right. it off in the last little bit. Short. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she, short. I don't think she is at all. It's just that the, she's she, turned. The photo is taking too far backwards. Somebody said in the back, um, she says she does she look more square than? Yeah, yeah. that she looks a little bit. Okay. That's what I mean. And um, I, I think the um, screen is, is, is not really flattering to some of these, which is too bad. Um, so my price, um, I chose the photo I'm sending for a number of reasons. To my mind, she is a class, oh, it's um, something, it's up there, isn't it? <laughs> She is a classic example of what I consider the correct collie outline. She was also one of my all-time favorite girls. I remember seeing this bitch, and she just was beautiful. I have always treasured this picture of child champion Southland's <laughs> Confederate clouds. She was made just days. It was made just days before she left for that national. Uh, she won an award in America a few days later. The first thing I think about when looking at this picture is our standard. It states in the first paragraph that no part should be out of balance with the whole. I love the sentence that calls for the proud picture of true balance, each part being in harmonious proportion to every other part and to the whole. And another line that quickly follows, it can be stated simply that no part of the poly ever seems to be out of proportion to any other part. I look for lines that are not extreme in any way. To me, is the essence of uh, balance and correctness. I'm hearing the term big sweeping curves used lately, and that troubles me in the fact that big sweeping curves are not called for in the standard, but balance is. Um, this is a very important point if we stray from our standard in the search for something extreme or even exotic in outline such as excessive neck. It is important that the silhouette is unmistakably, uh, unmistakable as that of a collie and not another breed. Um, I want to make a comment here that uh, we had an architect in the first group, Kathy Pretty, and she, she said, I like the term 
occurs because she said to me that indicates that everything is not just in angles and that a collie is curves and, and when you look at this picture I mean it's it's beautiful curves there's just everything that, there's nothing that you know just comes down at an angle and the proof doesn't just fall off like that and whatever so um, I think what Mike is talking about here is going to extremes and I'm not sure I haven't heard big sweeping curves she was much out where I am have, have you heard this um, <clears throat> but I I, I, uh, I think curves curves does describe a collie very nicely and if you have any comments or about these pictures please please speak up um, when I look at this picture I see several things that I feel contribute to the correct collie structure she is slightly longer than she is tall yet she is not too long in the loin her top line is strong and level with a gently sloping proof I see this I see that the shoulder blade and the upper arm both appear to be at the same angle and the same length. This can be evaluated simply looking at where the front legs are placed. Notice how this comes over and over again. If the front legs are not under the dog and placed, and placed too far forward, then there is a problem. The ear should never be behind the front legs when the dog is seen in profile. This creates a uh, fleshy upright position, but it is incorrect. It should indicate a straight shoulder. The rear should also be in balance with the front. Her back legs are in line with the point of buttocks and not far out behind the dog as she stands. Now, Roxanne Height sent us um, two pictures here. And she writes, overall balance and structure are like looking at an athlete. Effort, effortlessly, they, they just um, look great standing still or moving. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I lost that one. I think she, she ran on in a sentence. I'll try it again. Um, overall balance and structure are like looking at an athlete. Effortlessly, they just look great standing still or moving. It's what sets the ordinary apart from the extraordinary. Overall balance, each part in harmonious proportion to every other part and as a whole in both head and structure. When referring to overall balance, consider a collie's general appearance as a whole, each portion in, in a harmonious balance with every other part, creating the proud, impressive picture of elegance and beauty. Structure is important as it creates the overall picture but in the collie you must also have a correct expression correct expression is a combination of head qualities and how the eye is set as well as the shape and color giving the eye a forward outlook the ear size and carriage the rounded muzzle that blends into the flat back skull divided by a slight or perceptible stop Head planes being equal in length with a clean rib line and a blunt finish on a light head without depth being smooth and clean on the sides. Again, everything is in balance with expression always being a deciding factor. And Joe Reno of High Crest Collie sent this photo of um, Champion Clarion and Cognito, who sadly passed away just before this national. <coughs> this dog shows what I believe to be the proper outline for a collie. Good length of neck, nice level back, body slightly longer than tall, nicely sloping through, pop, proper angulation front and rear. From here, he looks very square only because this is this is not a good From our angle, it looks square too. Yeah.
some of those that originally helped to form my ideal of the perfect colleague. I thought about champion to Callan Golden Grover, who, had, who has always been an inspiration, and of the beautiful champion Aaron Zolan Gold Rush, and of many of the grand wine dogs who helped to fill in the gaps in my education. But the problem with using these early dogs to explain the standard faced some serious drawbacks. Photography was in its early stages, and grooming and training and posing the dogs for pictures was not the science it is today. We touched on that still. I still saw the same beauty of balance in these dogs, but the photographs fell far short for me to be able to clearly describe to others what I was seeing. So instead, I decided to focus on a more current dog who actually took my breath away when I saw him at the specials class in the 2008. Right. Wisconsin. There were a number of worthy champions in that group, judged by Tom Cohen, but when champion Tally Wood trans Transcendental entered into my field of vision, I have to say that there was a dog who really filled my eye. First of all, he was the ideal picture of a collie male. He was masculine, but without being overdone. No question what sex he was. He had a beautiful outline, long arch neck, well laid back shoulder, a level top line with a slight, gently sloping croup, and powerful hind quarters. He was a bit longer than tall with ample bone without being clunky, nicely bent, stifled, and well let down hop. His coat fit him beautifully, not overdone or bushy or over trimmed. He looked like his coat grew that way and he didn't have to be sculptured into shape. His head was long, light, and his profile was gorgeous with the same balance of head that is also exhibited in body. The muzzle and under jaw were smooth and well finished. His lip line was long, tight, and dry, and he had no depth of head. All this quality with a beautiful expression, excellent ear set, and a stunning blue pearl color. The fact that he showed himself naturally without having to be strung up or stacked to make a picture was an added bonus. And the way all his parts fit together was e were evidenced by the fluid movement that he exhibited. He was thrilling to watch. My only disappointment that I did not greet him. Nice. She really, I love the descriptions mm -hmm. that she has. Mm -hmm. Just kind of follow it. And in closing, um, Nancy found this quote from Tom Cohen we were talking about Shelley's. She said, in closing, I want to leave you with the words of Tom Cohen, who's describing his perfect Shelby here, but it's so beautiful and can easily apply to our colleagues. My ideal Shelby always appears in the late afternoon light, that golden light that softens everything and gives it almost a glow from within. He, and we'll use the masculine form only for purposes of this description, as there is no preference on my part, is standing in a field of green, and I am immediately stuck, struck by his beauty. He is regal and proud with great symmetry and balance, elegant balance, not stuffy or cloddy in any sense. He is, however, sturdy to build with well furred legs that provide a sound foundation for his athletic body. He sees something in the distance and draws himself up, exhibiting reach and pull of the neck. I notice that his head is well above the level of his back and well forward of his front legs, indicating a well-angulated front. 
The graceful curves of his arched neck, which fits smoothly into his back, gradually sloping through the well-bent stifle, create flowing lines that are pleasing to the eye. There is nothing square or short-legged about this picture that would spoil the overall impression of elegance. I notice that this dog is not long in the underline, and the, and the distance between his front and rear legs is relatively short, a sign of correct angulation and length of back and loin. The tail completes the flow of this picture, and I see the hair on it actually touches the grass, indicating good length of vertebrae. The crowning glory is a profuse, harsh double coat, rich in color, that fits the dog and further enhances its outline. That's a Shelby description, and a lot of it I think we can even picture in our colleagues. Um, so, the next five days you're going to see um, a thousand colleagues. That's amazing. Anyway, I, 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 I challenge you to try this uh, at ringside. Watch the dogs as they pose for the judge, and then and look at their, their balance and does it appeal to you. And then, importantly, as they move, watch them move around and see if they keep, like Nancy says, do they keep that balance and outline? Or do they fall forward or back to the balances and the movement too? And it's all, it's all connected and everything. And um, just just observe the dogs as, as they move and, and see what appeals to you and what your eye for balance is. So, have fun. Thank you. Thank you.